Hello, in our last video we looked at how we could draw the structure of atoms and for the video today we're going to look at something called the electronic structure of atoms. But first let's remind ourselves of how we draw an atom from this information that we would find on the periodic table. So what we said was we could figure out the number of protons, electrons and neutrons and then add it to our diagram. So the number of protons was the number at the bottom here and we can put that directly onto our little table. So we've got 12 protons, and we said the number of electrons was the same as the number of protons because in an atom, protons and electrons balance each other out. There are uh, Protons have a positive charge, electrons have a negative charge, so in an atom, we have the same number of each. And then the last one, we said number of neutrons, well, the number at the top here, this is our mass number, and this was protons plus neutrons. So if you wanted to work out the number of neutrons, we just take away 12, which is the protons, from 24, which is protons and neutrons. So 24 take away 12 gives us an answer of 12. So we have 12 protons, 12 electrons, and 12 neutrons. Now... We can then add these to our diagram. So we said the protons and neutrons live in the nucleus. So we can say 12 protons and 12 neutrons in the nucleus there. And then we can add on our electrons. And we said there was a rule to how we added on the electrons. We have a maximum number of two in the first shell, eight in the second, and eight in the third. So we need 12 electrons altogether. So we put two in the first one. I'm using crosses, which is pretty standard for using uh, for drawing electrons. Two in the first one, eight in the second. That gives us a total of 10. You don't necessarily have to draw them in pairs like this, but it makes it easier to keep count and to show the correct number. So it doesn't matter whether you do it in pairs or spread around, but pairs tends to be a bit neater. So here we go, two in the first shell, maximum eight in the second, that takes us up to 10 and then the last two that takes us up to 12. So here we have our atom of magnesium. Now, in terms of doing the electronic structure, you can show it either on a diagram like this, or we can write it out in the form, in a form like this. So we have two electrons in the first shell, eight in the second, and two in the last shell. So this is another way of writing out the electronic structure. If we were to practice that for a few more, here I've got a small part of the periodic table and highlighted three more elements and we can have a go at drawing the electronic structure on a diagram and writing it out. So for the first one, helium, we've got a proton number of two. That means electrons we have two. I'm not too interested in doing the protons and neutrons in the nucleus, just the electronic structures. So I can write H in the middle for helium and put in our two electrons, and we have an electronic structure of two. For nitrogen, seven protons, therefore seven electrons. So we would do two electrons in the first shell, and then five in the second, two, four, five. And our electronic structure in written form would be two, five, to give us a total of seven. For sulfur, we've got 16 electrons, so we would do two, eight in the second shell, which takes us up to a total of 10, but we need 16, so we need six more electrons. Two, four, six, there we go. And our electronic structure is two, eight, six. We can practice that for a few more, and what you should be able to do is do the electronic structure either in a diagram or in written form for the first 20 elements. By the first 20, we mean by looking at the proton number. So we've got a hydrogen with one, helium with two, three and four for lithium and beryllium, and so on, all the way up to calcium, which is 20. So you should be able to do the electronic structures for all of those. You can pause here and have a go at writing those down and check your answers in a moment. Here we go, we start off with hydrogen, which has one electron, so you can write it like that. Helium has two, and that first shell is now full. So we can then start on our second shell, which is, oops, it's not three, can't do three. It's two in the first shell and one in the second. Beryllium, two, two, 
and you can see a pattern emerging here. I'll just speed that up a little bit so you don't have to watch me go through it all slowly. When we get to neon, we now have a full second shell, so we need to start a third shell for sodium. So that's two, eight, one. Um, I could have done all the ones in between, but I'm sure you can practice that if you need to. I've just gone to the last two, which is K for potassium. We've got 19 electrons because we've got 19 protons. So that would be two, eight, eight, one, which totals up, I believe, to 19. And then calcium, we have the final one, two, eight, eight, two. Okay, so there we go, how to draw the electronic structure on diagrams or in written form.